is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts. Right, right now. now, here we go. How you doing? All right, 1-800-288-WBAP. We have lost our collective minds in this country. Um, I'm going to play for you in just a little bit. I had the opportunity last night to uh, spend some time with uh, Governor Greg Abbott uh, on a Facebook live event. Um, had, I think, like 50, 50, how many was it, David? It was... Uh, 56,000? It's right now, it's 57,000 and still growing. Wow. We had a great audience last night. Alex Trevino, the uh, campaign spokesman, myself. Uh, Jackson, the campaign manager. Uh, we, uh, you know, I, I I thought I'd be there for a segment or two, right? Oh, you thought wrong there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I didn't move uh, for an hour and a half, uh, but had a great time. And, you know, we ask what your questions would be for the governor. Had a chance to speak before and after uh, the event, but um, I didn't even have to ask. I mean, the first three uh, key issues, he's obviously been listening to you because uh, they were all three issues were exactly what we've been talking about this week. So I um, had a great time with the governor and uh, guys, uh, total professionals. Um, David, uh, uh, my producer, was there and uh, took care of things, and we appreciate that. Um, if uh, if the governor calls, we're available anytime. And it was uh, it was it was a very very good event. And like I said, the audience uh, tuned in. About fifty seven thousand uh, people were viewing the Facebook Live event. So. Uh, had a great time, and I've got some of that for you. I'll do for you in a minute. But this hit me as I was walking down the hall. Um, I mean, California is is certainly the land of fruits and nuts. I mean, I broadcasted out of Southern California, um, what, 16 years, almost 17 out of San Diego. I mean, I wouldn't raise my kids there. I flew back and forth. Um, but they have lost it. They've, and, you know, the next time they say, well, we want to, we want to secede from, uh, the United, go ahead, be my guest. Let me help you pack what, whatever you need. You need U-Hauls, let pull the trucks in, uh, whatever, whatever it takes. Um, th- these people are, have, have lost it. I, I don't know that there's a Patriot left in California. Now, if you're listening to me in California, don't take this personal, but Attorney General Jeff Sessions said today he just unloaded on California Democrats who are pushing this uh, this radical open borders agenda and putting everyone, everyone at risk. He was speaking at an event for California law enforcement, and man, your heart goes out to those guys and women because um, the state is worried. I mean, they're, they're fighting two fronts. They're fighting the front with the bad guys. And they're fighting uh, the state of California. It, it's it's nuts. Um, uh, Sessions, oh, and by the way, just for good measure, uh, the Department of Justice is suing the state over their sanctuary city mentality. Uh, he tore into Oakland Mayor Libby Schaff. Have you heard about her? Uh, she tipped off the public to an immigration raid in the San Francisco Bay Area last week. Now, that doesn't surprise me. I mean, I, I'm not sure who the politicians in California are working for. Just please, please don't come to Texas. All right? Don't, please. Um, he said that move led to as many as 800 illegal immigrants. Some have committed rapes, drug crimes, possible murders. We don't know because they got away. Thank you, Mayor Schaff. Um, they evaded capture because the mayor tipped them off. Hey, you guys, ICE is coming on such and such a day at such and such a time. That they, She put res, residents of California and law enforcement, she put them at risk. I mean, you don't know what these people are going to do. They, yeah, but he just unloaded on her. How dare you, he said. How dare you needlessly endanger the lives of our law enforcement officers to promote your radical liberal open borders agenda and well you know why they've got an open borders agenda nobody wants to live there anymore 
I wouldn't either. In defending the lawsuit, he accused California lawmakers of passing laws that are not only unconstitutional, but also a plain violation of federal statutes and uh, common sense. You know, the common sense, I don't know where you find common sense in California. Importantly, these laws are harmful to citizens, and they're especially harmful to law enforcement. And then Sessions said, I did what I believed was right for my community. Um, the, man. And then the mayor came up. Uh, I, I don't know where they found her, maybe off MTV someplace. Uh, people should be able to live without fear or panic and know their rights and responsibilities as well as their recourse. What are you talking about? What, what, what are you, from Ecuador? What? what, what this is a nation ruled by law. It's not some third world banana republic. Democrats push back against the Trump administration's crackdown on so-called sanctuary cities. I'm done with sanctuary cities. If you're a sanctuary city, not one dime of federal funding. You know, if you, if you want to be Mexico, go to Mexico. You know, this is no, oh, I love this. You get the uber liberals that call you up. Well, Mr. Roberts. No human being is illegal. Excuse me? No human being is illegal. We don't own the earth. What What are you talking about? House Minority Leader Nancy, I've lost my ever-loving mind, Pelosi. She said today that the lawsuit by the Department of Justice against California marked a new low from the Trump administration said the president was abusing the legal system to push his mass deportation agenda. Uh, Nancy, God bless you, Nancy. You've just lost your mind. You, 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 you have lost your Democrats no longer understand the rule of law mentality that sets this country apart from third world countries. Uh, why? Well, you have to ask yourself, who are they catering to? Who are the Democrats wanting votes from besides anyone that can breathe air? The people of California will not be bowed by the Trump administration's brazen aggression and intimidation tactic. This is Nancy Pelosi, so, you know, give her a break. Uh, Californians will continue to proudly keep our doors open to the immigrants who make America more American. Now, how does that, okay, you know, I'm, I'm the product of a public education. Got a few degrees, not sure whether they help me or not. But how do, how do immigrants, illegal immigrants, Nancy, there's a difference. There's a difference between those that stand in line, want to assimilate, want, they, re, you know, I had a, I stopped at the Shell station uh, just before I came in the studio. And this guy's from Bangladesh. But you know what? He speaks English. He speaks it, and he said, he said, you know, the guy that was before me, he was like, you know, blah, 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 blah. And he goes, I'm sorry, I don't understand you. And the guy got mad at him. He got, wait, wait a minute. Here's a guy from Bangladesh wishing to assimilate into the country. So he learns the language, goes to night classes so he can learn to be an American, how to assimilate. And here's some guy, he looked like a construction worker, I've done that, um, just absolutely beside himself uh, because the Bangladesh guy couldn't understand the Hispanic guy. And I'm sitting there going, man, all I really want is a drink. You know, I mean, you know, I got my, actually it's ice. Have you ever had those? They're great. Um, I'm standing, I'm watching all this. So the guy gets mad and leaves and I'm talking to this guy, I see him all the time. And he goes, I don't understand this. If, if, if I go to another country, they're not going to speak my language from Bangladesh. They're going to speak their own language. Gonna, why is it every other country can have their own culture, their own language, but not America? No, we've got to you know, worship at the altar of Nancy. I think I'm seeing things Pelosi. And no one's illegal, Rick. No one's illegal. No one can be illegal. I continue to feel confident that what I did was the right thing and it was legal. I did not give specific information that could have endangered law enforcement. I encourage people to not panic 
but to know their rights. Oh, Lord. Listening to liberals. When I was young, when I was little, you know, we didn't have all the cartoons we have today. We had Looney Tunes. Remember those? Yeah, what's up, Doc? Listening to to these uber liberals, especially in California, is like watching Looney Tunes. Grab some popcorn, you know, kick back and just prepare to be entertained. I didn't give specific info. Uh, if you're if you're on the 2600 block, but not the 2601, but not 2602. Let's just say if you're halfway down the block, oh, lady, just because. You're kowtowing to a bunch of illegal immigrants who can't even understand what you're saying. Uh, does not make you correct. Attorney Jeff Sessions, Attorney General Jeff Sessions, uh, just unloaded on her, and rightfully so, and then sued the state of California. Uh, the Department of Justice is suing the state of California for its sanctuary cities practice. It, it, do you know that violent crime has gone up? Drug uh, Drugs uh, crimes have gone up. Um, you know, I... I Broadcasting out of uh, San Diego. San, San Diego is a lovely place. I mean, for a long weekend. I would uh, I'd broadcast uh, out of the studios there for like 10 days in a row. Then I would fly back here uh, for another 10 days. Then back and forth and back and forth. That way I didn't miss any of my daughter's functions. Or I didn't miss any of my son's baseball games or football games. Um, you know, I said, yeah, I'll, I'll take your money. But I'm not going to raise my kids there. You know, you got to learn Spanish just to order fast food. Uno momento, por favor, mi amigo. Um, uh, uh, dos. Dos grande Pepsi. Okay, I'm fed. I mean, it's just, I'm done with it. I'm just sick of it. And all you uber liberal people, well, that we don't own the earth. No human being is illegal. All right, well, I tell you what. Why don't you go to Ecuador, San Salvador? Why, why don't you go to these, uh, some of these countries uh, that you seem to want to wrap your arms around, uh, stay for a couple months and then see if you want to come back and do the same thing here. I promise you, you won't. By the way, coming up at three o'clock, we got a ton of calls yesterday um, on uh, people saying they were given the wrong ballots, Democrats showing up where Republicans vote and so on. Uh, so we're going to take your calls on that, but not until three o'clock. All right. Uh, let me get to your calls. Let's go to Stephen in Mansfield. Stephen, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Stephen? I'm great, Rick. How are you? Oh, I, I'm great. I couldn't be better. Well, I got a couple of comments. First, the mayor of Oakland uh, warning the uh, illegals that ICE was coming. Where did she get that information, and why would ICE divulge when they're going to be there? Well, you got me, man. I don't know, but she uh, she was right. 800 illegals got away. Well, you got to be smarter than what you're working with. I know ICE is smarter but you don't say anything to her. I don't know what's up with that. You know what? That's funny you say that. I, I was talking about construction earlier. When I was in, in college, I worked uh, for a custom home builder. And his head contractor, I think the guy was 150 years old. It would be 110 degrees in the shade. This guy would have on a thermal T-shirt, a flannel shirt, overalls, drinking uh, hot coffee out of a green stainless thermos. Uh, as we're walking the top plates, you know, we're, we're about half undressed and boys, you got to be smarter than what you're messing with. You're going to get hurt. I mean, he used to say that every single day. And I would like to, uh, uh, other than South American countries, I would like to see her go look at the borders in Mexico and the Southern borders of Mexico to see what happens to illegals when they come in there. But you don't hear anything about that. You just hear how bad we are. We're, 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 we're horrible. We're, we're, I can't even believe we're having a civil discourse. It's just sickening to me. I just, I don't know where these people's brains are. They just, where were they raised at? You know what? It's, you know what's the problem? The problem is uh, there's no consequence for action. There's no shame any longer. Uh, there's no right. responsibility. Uh, people have been raised to think, oh, it's a free country. Hey, partner, there is no freedom without some responsibility. Uh, you no, know, they, the, they've just been raised like, oh, you know, how do you feel? As long as you feel okay, everything's fine. There's no free anything, so I don't know where that philosophy comes from. But I appreciate you taking my call and, and keep up the work. To, uh, I, I just don't want any of these nut jobs moving here and starting turn, trying to turn Texas blue. Hey. That will make me sick to my stomach. <laughs> Amen, brother. I appreciate the call. Very much. Belinda in Fort Worth. Belinda, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Belinda? 
I'm doing well, sir. It's such an honor to be on your radio show. Thank you so much for what you do and, well, and thank practicing you. freedom of speech. Thank, thank you. you. So my name is Belinda Trevino. I'm from the lower Rio Grande Valley, McAllen, Texas, which is about, I don't know, five miles from the border. My grandfather did come over from Michoacan, Mexico, but he never waved the Mexican flag. He never pushed that we're to, you know, learn our mother tongue. And he always said that the American way was why he came. And so we had to speak English. We had to respect and honor the flag. And that was our flag. And so I, I just really like the way Donald Trump, our president, Donald Trump, is slowing down the faucet of immigration so that America's standards can go back to the way they were, where if you want to come, it's a privilege, and you come to assimilate, not to wave your flag and bring your ways. And so I had an incident at a gasoline station where um, a, uh, an, a worker who was from, obviously from Mexico because they didn't speak English, and, or from, I should say, from one of those countries um, down there, I didn't interview him. But he got into my personal space and he was, you know, like breathing on me. He was like coming onto me. And, and, and those are customs that we really need to express that that's not allowed here. You know, you don't get into someone's personal space and, and try to flirt with them to that extent. It's just, it's just not right. So I, that's I, wish you, I, wish talk about. I wish you'd had a taser and just say, hey, welcome mm-hmm. to America. Zzz, you know. Yes. So I think we need to consider that there's some social norms in those other countries because there are no laws and there's no just customs that we have that they, they don't have down there that we have over here. And people who feel sorry for them really need to um, see what their social norms are and and really want to decide, is that what they want now here in America? You're right. right. You're, you're right. I mean, let's let's face it. It's it's completely different culturally. Um, you know, mm-hmm. that's uh, driving and drinking in Mexico is, uh, you know, it's, it's looked at, but not very hard. Uh, you know, that's Correct. why that's why we have so many problems uh, with Hispanics drinking and driving in the United States. It's exactly it, uh, I mean, you know, well, I can hear people now all oh, that right wing talk show host says that uh, Mexicans drink more than I didn't say that. What I said was, no. have you ever been to a Seven Eleven store about five forty five anywhere in America? Yes. Every construction worker and uh, in, 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 within the state is getting uh, you know their their forty to drink on the way home. Now look, I got nothing against drinking, but just don't do it while you're driving. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're right, Belinda. Absolutely right. All right. Um, I don't know what got me off on this tangent. You know, I pull into a shell station. Yeah, I've seen those around. I walk in to get a, a cold drink that I bring to work. I keep here by the microphone. So when I start yelling, I can drink something. Um, this guy is always there. He's from Bangladesh. It's broken English, but he's, you can tell he studied. He can understand me. I can understand him. That's, uh, kind of, uh, expected. In America, you know, if I walked in there and it was, you know, blah, 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 what? I don't know what you're talking about. And then there's a customer ahead of me. I'm not in a big rush. You know, made, made it to work in plenty of time. Um, but I'm not in a rush. There, the guy in front of me is Hispanic, and he's mad at the guy from Bangladesh because the guy from Bangladesh doesn't speak uh, Spanish. And the guy from Bangladesh, wait a minute. I moved to this country, I love this country, I studied so I'd know the language so I could work, and he's mad at me? Okay, that only makes sense in California. Alexa, Alexa, make me a sandwich. Have you got that? Have you got Alexa? Have you got the, or Google Home? Have you got anything like that? I have an Alexa, yes. Yeah, see, so that just, I don't know if I'm up for that. I love it. It just, uh... I, I don't want a piece of electronics that's smarter than I am, you know, late at night. It's time to go to bed. Well, no, I'll decide. Okay. I'm, I'm no I use it for cooking. You use it for time. cooking? Yeah, for you. You set timers? <laughs> you use your Alexa for a t- as a timer? Yeah, I say, Alexa, start a timer for 12 minutes. Well, you know, you can get a timer at Walmart for about a, two bucks. Yeah. But then I have to push the button. I just no, use my voice to do it. Oh There's God. one on the microwave. I'm not a millennial. Oh, Lord. All right. Um, I'm starting to settle down a little bit. I'll probably get drove back up at 3 o'clock when we start talking about voting irregularities. I had uh, an opportunity last night 
uh, to spend a, a couple hours uh, with some great folks and Governor Greg Abbott, and it was just a great time. We had about 57,000 people tuned in on a, a Facebook Live event, and uh, I'm sure it's still up on the governor's website if uh, if you want to take a look. Um, we, uh, we went through the races, Alex Trevino, which is a campaign spokesman, and myself, and we had uh, a senator or two on, and of course the governor. And I'll, uh, I'll play the governor's piece for you in just a little bit. Um, sanctuary cities. Uh, Mayor Rawlings, if you're listening, I ask him, see if you can find that. I ask him, Mayor Rawlings, Mayor of Dallas, are we a sanctuary city? What's the difference between a sanctuary city and a welcoming city? I have nothing against any ethnicity, nationality, nationality, it, it, nothing. I mean, if you're a jerk, it really doesn't matter to me where you come from. You're a jerk. Um, but I'm so sick and tired of America being everyone else's doormat. Now, why is it? Explain this to me. All right. If there's one hair on fire, wide-eyed liberal out there, uh, loosen your grip from uh, the mighty oak for just a second Give me a call and tell me, why is it okay for every other country on planet Earth to have its own culture and language except us? Why is that? I mean, I've been around the block a time or two in talk radio, TV and radio. Um, You know, I I watch campaigns, political campaigns. I watch uh, celebrities and so on, and I just shake my head and I say, who are these handlers? You know, who did this ad or who set up that interview? Uh, you got to get out in front of things. I mean, generally speaking, if you're honest with with the public and get out in front of a situation, um, they'll stay with you for just about every. You need to know how to do that, though. And and I'm thinking to myself, why is it you go to France? Oh, welcome to France. Okay, great. Um, you speak English? No, we speak the French. Okay, all right. Well, that's good. Um, welcome to Germany. Um, Sprechen die Deutsch. I, I mean, every single one of these countries, they can have their own culture. They can have their own language. Um, you know, they welcome tourism, and nobody beats them up for it. Well, what do you mean? I have to speak English. Well, what is, I'm in Wichita, Kansas, man. Uh, aren't you progressive enough to speak uh, fill in the blank? I, I'm sorry. It just, I've had it. You know, sometimes I hit the wall just like you do. And this whole sanctuary city thing, California, if you want to be the open border state, which you already are and have been for some time, fine. Secede from the union. Nobody cares. And then just... Withhold all federal funding. I mean, it's it's a horrible place to live day in and day out. I mean, it's a wonderful place to speak, uh, spend a, a long weekend. You know, like San Diego, it's always 74 degrees year-round. Um, and it's, you know, you can't get on the beach on the weekend. Forget that. Um, it's just, it, but it's not a great place to live unless you're trilingual and, uh, you know, you can afford to spend $4,000 a month for a one-bedroom apartment. Uh, not so hot. All right, let me uh, let me go to your calls. Jeff in Grand Prairie. Jeff, thanks for waiting. How are you doing, Jeff? I'm doing very well. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you very much. A, a great show, and it's uh, awesome to talk to you again. Thank you very much. You, you know, one of the things that's not being told here, and I know you know this, is that the disproportionate impact of these sanctuary cities and open borders on the on the black community Yep. Uh, the truth be told, the African-American leaders should be at the forefront of the demand, the call for secure borders and immigration enforcement. Truth is, long before the tragic death of Kate, of Kate Steinle, I mean, still we're still dealing with that. I mean, it was very terrible. Long before her death in 2015, I believe it was, there was Jamil Shaw II in 2008 who was brutally executed uh, by a, a dreamer, so to speak. This kid was being recruited for big time football at Stanford and Purdue. I recall that, yeah. Recently, uh, President Trump played a uh, host to the parents of Kayla Cuevas and, and Missa Mickens, two young girls who were beat and hacked to get to death by MS 13 gang members in, in Long Island, New York. And then, of course, very recently, we have the NFL pro, pro Bowler, Edwin Jackson, who was killed by uh, a drunk driver who happened to be, again, uh, an illegal alien. Uh, this is absolute madness, and I, it's imperative that 
the African American politicians in particular be held to account for their uh, inexplicable support of sanctuary cities. And, and the last thing I want to say, and I'll, I'll be quiet, is that Lupe Valdez, is there any doubt that she would be a sanctuary governor? No, no, none. Uh, you know, I, I said last night on the Facebook Live event with Governor Abbott, uh, somebody asked me, I think it was Alex Trevino, uh, he said, uh, you know, Rick, what are your thoughts on on Ms. Valdez, you know, quitting the sheriff's department and running for governor? And I said, well, I've, I've listened and I've read and I've watched and one piece of advice I would give, if you're going to run for governor, you probably ought to have a reason. Um, and I'm not, I'm not being facetious. It just, you know, so far she hasn't given any reason why she wants to be governor. Well, you're right. And the pablum that I heard her, uh, vomit last night during her, um, her, her speech was absolutely ridiculous. She speaks as if somehow Texas is, is, uh, having, having troubles. This is, this state is booming economically thanks to the policies of governor Abbott. And were it not for Governor Abbott being so strong, we might already have sanctuary cities in this in this state. Amen, brother. You're absolutely right. And something else, uh, you know, Nancy Pelosi in the crowd will say, well, those are tragic stories involving immigrants. They'll never use the word illegal. Immigrants. But, you know, people that are naturalized, you know, they have problems. Hey, look, this isn't a contest. What are you talking? Why would you want to add to an already big problem? All right, 2.46 the time. I'm Rick Roberts, the Court of Public Opinion. Your voice, your opinion, your attitude on the issues of the day. Um, you know, I, Mayor Rawlings, I talked to Mayor Rawlings the other day. And I talked to him about a bunch of stuff. Um, man, if there was ever a guy, and Mayor, if you're listening, it's nothing personal. You know I don't ambush people on the show. I don't do that. Uh, but you're... you're your butt's got to be really, really sore from sitting on the fence. I, I mean, it really does. Um, I ask him about sanctuary cities. What's the difference between a sanctuary city and a welcoming city? Uh, I'm not sure there is a, a, a thing called a sanctuary city, okay? Because <laughs> I haven't been able to get anybody to define what a sanctuary city is. And I'll tell you, Dallas isn't one. And I'm tired of people throwing mud against Dallas because uh, they say we're a sanctuary city. I don't know what we do. We obey every federal law. We, we, we make sure that we uh, keep the safety of our citizens premier, and we get the bad guys, uh, whether they're uh, 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 undocumented or not, we almost out of illegal. this country and in jail. And so um, uh, I think it's political semantics, okay? It's, it's these, these words that are charged to make people emotive, but yet they don't have substance and real clarity in, 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 around them. And so I, I kind of reject stuff like that. You know, I, I got you. I've, I've heard you say that before. So uh, you are saying that uh, the regional law enforcement will, in fact, or does, in fact, work with ICE. No question. And we do it all the time. Okay. All right. We do it all the time. And all this political advertising I see on TV now against big liberal sanctuary cities. It's like, show me one in Texas. Okay. Show me one people. And, you know, stop trying to get votes and stop trying to be critical. This is what divides the country. All right. We need to come together and find common ground because we all. Political stuff. Um, Dallas joined other Texas cities, including Austin and San Antonio, in taking on the state's so-called sanctuary city law. It's, yeah, Mayor, it's a thing. Uh, Mayor Mike Rawlings made the announcement, um, gosh, what was the date on that? I don't have it, uh, that was June 7th. He made uh, the announcement June 7th, um, calling SB4 unconstitutional, and a law that greatly infringes on the city's ability to protect the public. According to Rawlings, the city attorney has serious constitutional concerns with uh, SB4, uh, which goes into effect or went into effect September 1st. He said at the council meeting that he had already spoken with Austin Mayor Steve Adler, San Antonio Mayor uh, Ivy Taylor about potential litigation. I told them both this was a serious issue. A San Antonio federal uh, district court announced it would consolidate the lawsuits filed by all the cities. 
So, come on, Mayor. You know what? That's not what I'm talking about when I say sanctuary city. Um, all right. Um, let me get to your calls. By the way, coming up just after 3 o'clock, uh, did you witness or did you uh, get caught up in, a vote, in any voting irregularities? I, we had probably 12, 13 calls yesterday from people that were given the wrong ballots, um, witnessed people, uh, Democrats uh, at Republican polling places and vice versa. Uh, let's go to, uh, and we'll do that right after three. Stephen Allen. Steve, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Steve? Pretty good, pretty good. I'm glad to be here in Texas. I moved here from California, and I realized we, we deserve to get bashed, but not all of us, because I am far more conservative than anybody I've ever met in Texas. And the thing, the advantage of moving here from California is I know all their tricks. Where where, like, do, where, instance, were you, where did you live in California? Well, I, I was born and raised in the San Francisco Bay Area in Oakland, but, you know, I grew up hunting, so I would I would always, you know— travel east and go out you know you're, to, you're the to, one to, guy in san francisco that hunts i think okay no 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 I, I have friends who hunt usually they try to hide it but last time uh, i was there for christmas we went up to mendocino killed a couple of pigs and i wanted to drive through san francisco with the tailgate down so they could see the pigs and uh there was there was a really good butcher shop in pacifica and everybody wanted to see our pigs because they, they they like hunting too so there's a strong minority there of people like me and uh, the, I was going to say the advantage of growing up there is I, I learned all their tricks. Like you asked, why, why does Nancy Pelosi want to make a big problem even worse? Job security. Yep. They, they, they talk. They talk. They, these people are not ignorant. They understand economics, for instance. And uh, they, they understand economics. You, you said, well, if these people went down to Guatemala for a year, and they, they wouldn't want to make the America like that. Are you kidding me? Yes, they would. Yes, they would, because the elites, the top, it's a top-down authoritarian sort of system. Well, if you're talking, elites- yeah, if you're talking about people like uh, Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi <clears throat> and a few and others. The mayor of Oakland. And, and the, the mayor, mayor of, of Oakland. Oakland. Yeah, I mean, uh, geographic location doesn't mean anything to them. I'm talking about yeah. the liberals in general. Uh, these people that, yeah. that you know, grab a hold of the first shiny object that swung uh, back and forth in front of them. Um, yeah, put them in a third world country for a while and see if you want to come yeah. back and make your state like that. Well, what I was going to say is I'm, I was going to give you a couple of specific ad- examples there. What they, what they've been trained to do as they were being raised was to emote rather than think it's like, well, if you're a good person, you would want this. So if you don't want this, you must be a bad person. <laughs> for instance, you, no, uh, for instance, uh, they, uh, that's how they keep. Uh, making the uh, emissions controls in yeah. te- in California stricter and stricter to the point where they already have clean air. Once you get clean air, you can't make it any cleaner, but that's the emotional blackmail they'll use. Oh, you must be against clean air if you're not going to vote for this extra bill. And so what they've, what they've gotten down to was uh, now there there's a California blend and a summer blend and a winter blend of gasoline. You cannot sell any other gasoline in the state of California. There's only two refineries that make it. One had a fire as the gas for, as the uh, oil prices were going up. So I was watching the news, and uh, there was a lady in California. They, they, were, they were talking about, why are these gas prices going up so high? It's like, are you kidding me? You don't understand? And there was a lady pumping her gas, and there was a, film, a TV crew, and there. she's like, oh, my God, what are they doing to us? And I'm laughing. It's like, what do you mean they, honey? You're doing this to yourself. No, you're you're right. I can tell uh, you've you studied some. You know, having come from an oil and gas background, uh, there are differences in formulas for different states. Um, California has the most expensive formula, uh, the blending, as as you call it. Um, so why are your prices going up? Well, uh, the lawmakers in California divorce big oil, divorce big oil. The lion's share of, uh, of uh, you know, the price of a gallon of gas goes in taxes anyway to the federal government. Uh, but you've got to build refineries. You know, I don't think they built a refinery in California since 63. Um, I could be off a few years, but they also have the most expensive blend, the ex- most expensive formula 
uh, of gasoline. So obviously it costs more. But the lawmakers aren't going to say that. They're not going to say, well, we're, you know, we've turned ourselves inside out uh, because of all these, uh, you know, regulations we've put in place in California. Uh, so that's why you're paying more for gas. No, it's somebody else's fault. Uh, and they point toward the east. Um, you're right. Absolutely right, Steve. Well, it's good to have you in God's country. Um, I hope to hear from you again soon. Okay. When we come back, how many calls we get? 12, 13, 14 calls yesterday from people saying they got the, they were given the wrong ballot or they witnessed people um, in the wrong polling place. Is that right? That is correct. Yeah. I, so I'm interested to see if uh, that was more widespread than what we heard yesterday. Also, Newsmax, you know what that is, right? Uh, sure New, do. Newsmax, the 10 best governors in America. Guess who's number one? I'll give you all that when we come back on <laughs> News Talk 820 WBAP. This is the News and Talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820 WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, uh, 304 the time. Now, Jerry Brown is calling uh, the Department of Justice lawsuit against his state a political stunt. Well, see how funny he thinks it is when they start withholding uh, federal funds. You know how Jerry Brown got elected? He got elected by people that were too young to realize how bad he screwed up the first time. That's, you know, that's what you do. You screw up, you lay around, smoke dope. Um, then, uh, you know, 15 years, 20 years later, you come back. Hey, how you doing? Hey, have you met me? Um, all right. Uh, yesterday we got, uh, it was voting day. We got, uh, 12, 13 calls from people saying they got the wrong ballot from people saying, uh, they saw Democrats where Republicans should be to vote. Um, I had a chance last night to, uh, to sit down with governor Abbott and uh, spend some time with him and his campaign spokesman and his campaign manager. I mean, just a decisive win. I think he got 90% of the vote or something like that. Um, it was it was a great time, and I'm, I'll play a little bit of that for you. As a matter of fact, if you want to see it, it was a Facebook Live event um, held at the Doubletree, and uh, they did a very, very good and professional job, but I think uh, the thing's still up at the governor's website. And you can go there and see Alex Trevino and uh, Senator uh, Hancock, myself, and the governor. Uh, it was a, a great time. So hopefully you get a chance to go. We had a, an audience of about 57,000, according to a uh, number of people that logged in. So we appreciate that very, very much. Um, having said that, uh, voting irregularities. I got to be honest, I didn't see or hear about as many as I normally do. That's, that generally happens in the general election, uh, not in the primaries. But uh, that's why it, uh, it, it sort of uh, caught my attention. I mean, it was one phone call after the other yesterday, uh, people being given the wrong ballot. Now, look, I'm not casting aspersions on the Democrats, but nothing Literally nothing would surprise me when it comes to, I mean, forget about collusion with the Russians. Forget about that. Um, When it comes to free and open elections in this country, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, it it never ceases to amaze me. Uh, We put more time, more money, and more resources into dispensing lottery tickets from the local convenience store than we do in uh, protecting the integrity of uh, an election in this country. Um, And I think that should change. Nothing the Democrats would do surprises me. And I was asked last night why, uh, why, if if you look back at 2014, there was a 98% increase in Democrats voting early. Why is that? They just all decided to go vote at one time? No. Trump has energized Democrats uh, just as he has energized Republicans, but for a, a vastly different reasons. 
Um, you know, the Democrats want him gone no matter what. Nancy Pelosi will sit up there and lie straight to your face all day long if she has to. Doesn't matter to her. Um, there are no checks and balances. And so nothing at a local level would, uh, would surprise me. I mean, they keep talking about, you know, Russian collusion, Russian collusion. Look out, uh, the Russians are coming. What? Somebody's on the phone for me? Who is it? Who is Comrade it? Rick Roberts. Okay. All right. Well, I don't need that. Um, but if you saw anything when you voted yesterday that seemed peculiar up to you or just out of place, uh, I want to hear about it. Um, it just, uh, you know, it just seemed odd, especially in a midterm, uh, that uh, there would be so many people given so many strange ballots. So we'll take your calls, 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. And in the meantime, I want to play for you uh, the, uh, the interaction we had with Governor Abbott. I'll just pay, play you a, a short piece uh, and then we'll take your calls. 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. If you saw anything out of the ordinary with, uh, with the voting yesterday, go ahead. Well, the moment we've all been waiting for, the man of the evening, Governor Greg Abbott, and congratulations on your official nomination. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, but I want to thank everybody watching for your tremendous support. Uh, the reason why I won is because of you, the people of this great state, uh, I'm honored uh, to once again receive the nomination to be uh, the Republican nominee for governor of Texas. Now we have our work cut out for us, working from now all the way to the general election day in November, making sure that we keep Texas in Republican hands. But I do want to emphasize the depth of my gratitude to all of you across our entire state. Uh, whether you're a volunteer, uh, a poll worker, uh, a fundraiser, whatever role you may play, just a voter. What we're talking about tonight are votes, and you provided the votes I needed not only to win, but to send a message that Texas values are not up for grabs. So thank you, Texas. Thank you, my fellow Texans. But know this. Tonight is like winning the first half of a football game. It doesn't, you know, you know that all too well. I know exactly what you're talking <laughs> it's about. It's not a victory. No, not yet. Many victories were declared at halftime. It will be. Erroneously. We cannot take this for granted. And I'll tell you why. You know why. Because our future is worth far too much than to take the next seven to eight months for granted. Because if we don't work all the way through Election Day, we could lose all that we've gained. Let me give you an example. Just earlier this week, I received my fourth Governor's Cup in a row. Every year that I've been governor, I received the Governor's Cup for Texas being ranked number one in the United States of America for new corporate expansions. The job market is growing here where we are tonight in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and across the entire state of Texas. Our unemployment rate is at an all-time low. Wages are rising. Texas is profiting in all areas of our great state. We have to keep the Texas economic miracle continue to grow. Second, we need to ensure that we fulfill the campaign promises I've already made. I've announced three initiatives since I announced my campaign. First is to do more to help our veterans. Help our veterans get good paying jobs, help them start a business, but also help our veterans get access to the health care they desperately need. Two is to reduce your property taxes. So many of our fellow Texans are being taxed out of their homes. We must rein in our skyrocketing property taxes so you can afford to live in the home of your dreams, so that seniors will not be taxed out of their homes, so that the cost of living in Texas will be far more affordable, keeping Texas an even better state. And then the third initiative that I've already announced is keeping our state safer. You deserve to live in safe communities. That means cracking down on dangerous gangs that may be lurking in your town or neighborhood. It also means in cracking down on the horrific human trafficking that seems to continue to grow in this great state. It means doing everything we can like what we've done already, and that is providing law enforcement with rifle-proof vests to keep them safe. Our job is to make sure that we provide our first responders every tool they need to do their job to keep you safe. As governor, I will work every single day to 
make our economy stronger, to make our community safer, to support our veterans, and to make Texas elevate even higher. Together, us working the next few months all the way to Election Day, we will keep Texas the very best state in the United States of America. Thank you so much. Governor, and Rick, you don't know, this man's been working for a very long time already. <laughs> Appreciate you, Rick. You know, I tell you, I wouldn't have missed this for anything. I've been with a lot of governors in a lot of states. Uh, this governor has demonstrated time and time again. Uh, it's about the people of the state. And he's going to do everything he can between now and the time he's uh, formally elected one more time to make sure that happens. Everything he just said was on this list from my listeners. What's that mean? Look at these. Look at the people the governor picked, uh, almost to a person. The people that won their districts, the governor picked. Well, that doesn't happen by accident. That happens by listening to the voters and voting for and getting behind people that will do what the voters want them to do. Now, if he'll do that for those candidates, imagine what he'll do for the state of Texas. Well, you make an important point, and that is we wanted to get involved and get behind candidates who worked so very hard. Right. Many of them won. Some didn't win. But the important thing is getting involved, giving primary voters a choice uh, to choose the candidate that they support. Exactly. But now, uh, after today, after, uh, you know, people are still counting. And I've got to tell you one thing, and that is what, while votes are still being counted, right now the information is that there are more Republican votes than Democrat votes. We'll see if that number holds. If it does, that means the Republicans really have turned out very robustly here on Election Day. Uh, but second, now that we turn the corner and head toward November, it's important that Republicans come together. Sure, we may have uh, differences in our family, but we are one family in the Republican Party. And we as a family will unite now and work together all the way to November to make sure that we keep Texas red. All right, uh, 14 minutes after the hour, let's check that afternoon drive. WBAP Traffic Watch. In Fort Worth, I-35, W still a busy ride for commuters. This report brought to you by Levy and Sun Service Experts. I-35, W going northbound at Allen Avenue. They blocked two left lanes. That accident is still out there, and we're seeing the delays on the northbound side backed up to Morningside Drive. Levy and Sun heating, cooling, and plumbing brand that's been trusted by your neighbors for 108 years. Call 866-EXPERTS today and receive $30 off any repair. That's 866-EXPERTS. With the WBAP Right Now traffic. Watch. I'm Marty Jones. Marty, thank you very much. Listen, if you haven't had your roof inspected from damage from last year's storm season, don't don't put it off. Do it now because time could be running out. You know, most insurance policies allow you one year from the date of loss to file your claim. And we had an early and active storm season last year, you might recall. Time could be short. That's why I want you to call McRoof. Call them today. M-C-R-O-O-F. They're a uh, well, they're a different kind of roofing company. Their proprietary inspection process is absolutely free. won't cost you anything. And you'll have the peace of mind knowing your inspection is the most professional assessment available. Now, if you know you have damage, even more reason to call. Like I said, time could be running out to recover 100% of your recoverable depreciation. And uh, you need to do this. As a matter of fact, here's the number, 682-235-7225. That's 682-235-7225. Or you can check them out online. It's a family business from the people you talk to on the phone to the people on your roof doing the work to the person doing the inspection, um, all family members. It's mcroof.us, M-C-R-O-O-F dot U-S. If you want every dime your insurance company owes you, you call McRoof. Just that simple. You don't need a roofer. You need McRoof. Check out uh, the reviews on Google, Facebook, the Better Business Bureau. You're going to find none better. And the reason's simple. Family owned and operated. And they don't quit. Will not quit until your family's taken care of. Great people. I've known them for years. 682-235-7225. Or online, McRoof. M-C-R-O-O-F dot U-S. the time. 
<laughs> I checked my email uh, during the breaks uh, because it's the only way I can keep up with it. I must have some English professor. You know, I, I'm a wordsmith, but I never, ever, ever advertise myself uh, to be grammatically correct at all times. Rick, for the love of Pete, can you stop saying people that? You know, if that's all you're getting out of the show, this probably isn't the show for you. Um, let's go to your calls. If you saw any voting irregularities or perceived irregularities yesterday, um, normally we don't get that many calls on one thing. We got like 12, 13 calls from people saying they got the wrong ballot. They saw Democrats where Republicans should be and so on. Uh, Hank, uh, Hank, thank you for waiting. I appreciate it. How are you doing, Hank? Great, Rick. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. Uh, the only irregularity that I saw um, from Bell County, and I voted early, is that normally uh, the workers, poll workers, uh, will stamp your voter registration with the ballot that they gave you to vote with in the primary. Uh, but this was optional at this time. I had to ask for it. I said, you know, stamp my uh, uh, voter registration card as Republican. Wait a minute. You had to ask for the correct ballot? No, I said I got the correct ballot, but normally once they give you the ballot in a primary, they will take your voter registration card and indicate which ballot you received. Ah, ah, I got you. REP or Democrat, I don't know, never voted Democrat. I don't know what the, uh, the abbreviation is, but this time it was an optional deal. And I said, well, stamp my card with Republicans. So, you know, when you come back and vote, I don't know what it means. I don't run off. I think, you know, it may be uh, uh, particularly uh, useful. Yeah, I, you know, I, as voting irregularities go, I, I, I don't, uh, I don't necessarily think uh, you know that could have could have been something on the individual you were dealing with. Um, you know, it, it sounds to me like uh, it sounds to me like that was the individual rather than uh, you know a concerted effort to to change the vote. Um, I haven't heard many of those uh, stories. Hank, I appreciate the call very much. Ken and Rowlett. Ken, thank you for waiting. Hi. How are you doing? Good. And uh, Rowlett, uh, the cheese was supposed to be, or on, on cheese, there's a uh, Shrady Elementary, and that was supposed to be the Republican voting spot uh, in Rowlett. And on the Rowlett website, it had it listed. And you got there, you didn't know until you got to the door. So it just, uh, it wasn't necessarily an irregularity. It just wasn't very convenient. Well, no, they moved, they moved the Republican primary to another elementary school all the way on the other side of town, away from that district. Do, did they have somebody in the original place to direct people where to go? Oh, once, once you got to the door. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, so you when, got to vote you got all 20 right. people in front of you and you get to the door. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a little late then. Isn't that, that, that's an issue. <laughs> yeah, should have had a sign out front. Hey, you, you've been moved to another place or whatever, or somebody out there letting people know. And and I wasn't the only one. Everybody that was there, that was standing in line in the Republican primary, well, did had no clue it was in this other building. Wow, wow, well, the, you know that's a bit more severe than uh, than the last call. At least we didn't have the new Black Panthers. Uh, standing in uh, in the doorway of the entrance. Uh, that would have been a, a problem, perhaps. Uh, Ken, thank you very much for the call. I appreciate it. Uh, let's go to Greg in Dallas. Greg, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Greg? Hey, uh, doing okay here. Fun day. What's going on? Hey, at the polling station we were at, uh, they had the regular booths where you go in, privacy and so on. Sure. There were two people, a guy and a gal, sitting about oh, four or five feet apart, and they were filling in ballots over and over and over again. And they were marking them and putting them aside, marking them and putting them aside. They'd gone through at least four or five, six of them while we were just in line waiting to cast our ballot. And it's like, uh, excuse me, what? is this how this is supposed what? to work? What? Did you ask them what they were doing? Yeah, they said not to worry about it. They said not to worry about it. 
Yeah. What what polling place was this? Oh, uh, in Carrollton. No, wait a minute. You, these were employees. These were polling place employees. Yeah. Or, and they were sitting there filling in ballots. No, it's not the polling people. It was two other, looks like the vision type people, no IDs, nothing, but they were filling in ballots. Good Lord. Good Lord. Yeah, wow. pretty much. Yeah, did you notify anybody, say anything to anybody? Yeah, I mentioned something, and the comment I got was, well, you don't need to worry about that. They're okay. <laughs> you don't need to worry. Yeah, it's just a free and open election in uh, the freest country on planet Earth. But don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Hey, Greg, don't worry about that. Fill out your ballot. Go on about your way. Uh, 326 the time. Eric Bushman standing by. Yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, in the WBAP newsroom, very latest breaking news. We'll check your afternoon drive. Would you like to know what the NAACP is calling for the federal government to do? You're not going to believe this. I'm not making it up. The president of the National Association for the Advancement of Color People is asking the federal government to do something and do it right now. I'll tell you about that now. All right, uh, 3.34 the time. Uh, if there's a uh, representative of the NAACP listening, because we've tried and tried, and we can't get a hold of anybody. If you're listening, you have an open invitation um, to try and shed some light on what I'm about to say, because it makes no sense to me. As a reaction to the uh, Florida school shooting last month, the NAACP president, and the CEO, Derek Johnson, he published an opinion piece this past Monday for the Black Press USA. The president of the NAACP is calling for Congress to enact Australia-style gun confiscation programs, a complete ban on military-style semi-automatic assault guns. Um, Given the disproportionate damage, he says, violence is having on our communities, the NAACP has advocated for sane, sensible laws to help eliminate, or at least to decrease, the damage and death caused by gun violence, requiring his words here requiring universal background checks on all gun sales transfers, banning military-style semi-automatic assault guns, enacting tough new criminal penalties for uh, straw purchasers, gun traffickers, allowing the Centers for Disease Control to research gun violence as a major public health issue. Just a few of the reasonable steps. Critics may call such policy interventions naively ambitious in our current political climate. However, comprehensive, sustainable gun control is achievable. Just look at Australia. Well, in his article, Johnson uh, casts gun violence as a civil rights issue, not just for black Americans, but for American school kids and their parents who deserve the freedom to not be afraid and so on and so forth. So the NAACP is now committed to fighting for your freedom to not be able to own guns because some gullible Americans take liberal media and politicians, they're fear-mongering about guns a little too seriously. The NAACP is calling for a national gun confiscation. For, um, For those of you out there that really believe that your kids are all in imminent danger of being gunned down at school. Let me give you a few facts, may I? Uh, There have been eight mass shootings directed at K-12 schools in the United States over the past 30 years. Eight in 30 years. 79 people, most of them students, were killed in these attacks. That amounts to roughly two or three people per year being killed in school mass shootings since 1989. 
the first instance of a mass shooting directed at a K through 12 school. The largest school massacre in American history was in 1927. It was a school bombing killed 44 people. By contrast, according to the U S consumer product safety commission, 163 children under the age 15, I believe fatally drowned in swimming pools or spas in the summertime. And that was in 2017 alone. Last year, 163 kids below 15 drowned in swimming pools or spas. Last year alone. The previous number was for the summer before. 205 kids drowned in the same circumstances. For both years, 70% of the victims were less than five years old. So for 2016 and 2017, you know, it's potentially underestimating, but they relied on uh, numbers for media reports of drowned children to create uh, their tallies. For some, context on this overall problem, according to the Center for Disease Control, an average of 3,536 people died each year from 2005 to 2014 in non-boating-related drownings. The annual numbers are probably pretty much the same. This goes back to 2015. In other words, more than four times as many kids, most of whom were toddlers or babies or not even old enough to go to school, um, died in swimming pools and spas in two summers. In two summers then were killed over a span of three decades in school mass shootings. I know it's horrific. It's horrible. And I don't mean to diminish the seriousness, but is the NAACP going to launch a pool control campaign next? Should Congress institute mandatory universal swimming pool checks at every pool and spa across the country, privately owned and and publicly owned? With TSA-styled uniformed security guards making sure that everyone going for a dip has their proper swimming registration cards. Maybe there needs to be limits on the deep end. After all, who needs to swim in 10 or 12 feet of water? Come on. You know, high-capacity pools are clearly a danger to society. Without a doubt. Uh, If this sounds a bit ridiculous, and it is, it's, it's for a purpose. It's really just an attempt to try and apply the NAACP's president, applying his logic, for lack of a better word, to what is a far larger problem, at least according to our government's own statistics. If you think that hundreds of millions of Americans' constitutionally protected right to possess and bear a firearm can and should be legally crushed into oblivion because the existence of one relatively infrequent type of tragedy, then why can't the government micromanage every product and pastime in our lives that cause some kind of death? If you would have asked me this yesterday before it hit my hand, hot off the presses, I would have said you're nuts. The NAACP is asking for Australia, uh, Australia-type Australia gun confiscation from Congress. I'm not kidding. All right, uh, 346 the time. It's amazing to me. Um, the president for the NAACP is calling for gun confiscation by the government and a national gun registry like the program implemented in Australia. Um, I think that was back in the 90s. Don't quote me on that. Among some other gun control measures. Um, He did an op-ed on Tuesday, Gun Safety is About Freedom. Okay. He said... uh, Uh, He's trying to make some connection between the current anxiety student. And by the way, you know, I don't 
mean to diminish even for a millisecond the tragedy in Florida or Columbine or Sandy Hook or anywhere else. But you have to look at this realistically. And the uber-liberal media manipulating and choreographing uh, these interviews um, with these kids, they're kids. Treat them like kids, not like little adults, but like kids. That's how you can best serve them, but they won't. He tried to connect. He said it's like the current anxiety students feel in going to school is the same that African Americans faced the Little Rock Nine when they had to be escorted to class by federal troops in the 1950s. Um, you know, I'm not a black guy, so I can't uh, I can't crawl into his head and and go there. Fear and terror still exist in children's classrooms because of the NRA. That's a totally unfounded statement. Give me, give me the foundation for that. What, what, what source are you citing? Fear and terror still exist in our children's classrooms because of the NRA and the politicians that support them. That's what he wrote. He went on to contend that passing gun control legislation is a civil rights issue. Given the disproportionate damage gun violence is having on her, well, it's not disparate. I mean, look, for the last 30 years, the number of people killed by guns, the children killed by guns in schools versus the kids that have drowned in their own swimming pools. It's not even close. You know, he pushed for a lot of the measures that uh, former President Barack Obama and Democrat lawmakers have been, uh, you know, touting for years. There, that's no surprise. But gun confiscation, I, I, I never thought that I would see a time when the head of the NAACP was calling for federal gun confiscation. I never thought that I would see that. Uh, Tom and McKinney. Tom, thank you for waiting. I appreciate it. How you doing, Tom? I'm, I'm doing great, Rick. Thank you for having me on today. You bet. I, I had uh, some stats that I saw on Facebook uh, a very smart millennial person uh, threw out these stats like she was reciting a uh, just an expose, and she said that in in Australia the death by uh, gun rate was one for every one hundred thousand people at a population of about twenty four twenty seven million. I forget what, which one it was. I'm I'm trying to get these off the top of my head by memory, and the Gun death rate in America was 1.6 for every 100,000 people with a population of 330 million, 320. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. Even, I mean, does, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't even add up because, I mean, we have more guns here and they confiscated their guns there, but yet they have the same amount of deaths approximately. Well, what, what they, she was probably citing, uh, there were. There was a historic penal colony, um, a site, uh, where 35 people were killed. Uh, I don't know how many injured. Uh, some guy went in and shot up the place in 1996, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it was 96. And after that, uh, you know, they banned semi-auto weapons, uh, the, you know, a month waiting period, uh, right. and so on. And, you know, de it depends on who you're talking to, whether it's a— you know, a pro-gun or an anti-gun person, um, you know, it, the verdict is still out as far as I'm concerned. I, I mean, data from uh, from that period indicates the rate of suicide by firearm fell by 67% from uh, 2.1 deaths per 100,000 to 0 0.7 deaths. But um, the same thing doesn't go for homicides. So... You know, all this gun talk is, is to me, is an effort in futility. It's a vicious circle of dialogue, no You're beginning, right. no, beginning yeah. no end. Um, You're right. I, I just can't believe that someone like the head of the NAACP would say, please come confiscate our guns. What? I, I don't understand that. Well, that's the beauty of America is they're more than free to give up their guns at the NAACP. Uh, NAACP. Um, but you know what, everybody knows 
that the more you take away guns from law-abiding citizens, the more the bad guys are going to have them. Well, it's, it's so we're the, not protected. Exactly, it's the same premise. You know, if I had my way and could wave a magic wand, I would take uh, gun-free zone signs off every building, every business, every school in America. Because all Absolutely. you're doing is telling bad guys, hey, we can't defend yeah. ourselves, come on in. Right, right. And and how how we can have armed guards at every state building in Texas and across America and not have them at schools? Yeah, that blows me away. It's nuts, that isn't it? Blows me away. Doesn't even Rick, make sense. I love you, buddy. I got to get off the phone here, but uh, carry on. Keep doing what you're doing, bud. We love you. All right, I appreciate the call very, very much. Let me see if I can get uh, Fred and Bridgeport in here. Fred, how you doing? Hey, how are you? Good. Well, I wanted to say about the uh, the quote unquote assault rifles. Uh, the AR-15 is the exact same thing as a Mini-14 except it has a different stop and it's it's the same gun the same gun and a 223 is only three one thousandths of an inch larger than a 22 that's the width of a sheet of paper it's a pop gun when uh, they got rid of the m14 and went to the m16 in vietnam people were outraged that we sent our uh soldiers into battle with this this toy well see the problem fred is this um you're you're trying to educate people about something they don't want to be educated about uh all they know is it's scary looking uh with its flash suppressor and uh pistol grip and collapsible stock and its black matte finish and uh it just looks like something you saw in a the movie they don't want to be educated on it they don't want to know about the AR-15 Sporter by Colt with a 223 round. They don't care. They don't care. All they know is it looks scary, therefore it's an assault rifle. They don't want to know about fully auto versus semi-auto versus single shot. They don't want to know about rifles versus handgun. They don't want to know about bazookas versus uh, an M1 tank. They, they don't care. All they know, it's a gun, and all guns are bad. And that's so trying to educate, you know, many times I'll have a producer's meeting and we'll talk about topics. And it's one of those things. Some topics are very, very good topics, but you've got to educate people on the who, what, when and where before you can get to the topic. Well, we don't have that kind of time in three hours. Um, So in the gun debate is the same thing. They people that don't have a gun, don't want a gun, don't know anything about guns. They don't want to know. They just know, look at that scary looking, what is that? An assault rifle? Yeah, I believe it is. I saw the Terminator use one of those on a movie. Uh, I mean, that's all they know. And that's all they care to know. So people that are trying to educate many times, um, you, you've got an audience that is unwilling to hear what you have to say. And that's why we've got such a contentious debate. Three fifty-five. the time, when we come back, well, we had our voting yesterday. It was looking good for the state of Texas in the primary. We're going to open up the lines next hour. We got all kinds of direction. The gun debates um, not over with. Uh, they're still talking about uh, collusion with the Russians. Can can you believe that they're actually still talking? I want to know how much money, how much, how many tax dollars have gone to this collusion with the Russians thing. Comrade Rick Roberts. Okay, well, no matter what your point is, we'll take it. We'll uh, open up the lines, just about anything you want to talk about. We'll do that next on News Talk 820 WBAP. This is the News and Talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820 WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right now. All right, uh, four minutes after the hour. Man, there's been a ton that's gone on. I need to uh, get an update from uh, um, our friend at uh, Eagle Gun Range. Um, on helping uh, the family of that fallen Richardson police officer. So let's uh, give me a total on that. Now, we've still got a few days before that raffle drawing. Uh, also, uh, 
I had a great time with uh, Governor Greg Abbott last night at the Doubletree. It was a Facebook live event. Alex Trevino was, uh, of course, there. He was the uh, the campaign spokesman. Um, Jackson was there. He was uh, he is the campaign manager. Uh, and I tell you, it was just a great time. I enjoyed myself immensely, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. It's because I've been with a lot of governors uh, in my time in talk and TV. Um, you know, I, I suppose the flashiest governor I've been around, I was part of the uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, recall governor, Gray Davis team. Myself and Richard Ridden and a few other people would meet uh, every other Saturday up in Los Angeles at a very uh, just different hotel banquet rooms and strategizing how to recall Governor Gray Davis, uh, who was trying to give driver's licenses to illegals to hang on to his uh, re-election bid. Um, well, you know, Schwarzenegger was uh, the lesser of two evils. So, uh, and, you know, I did the bus tour thing with him and opened up for him uh, on his, uh, you know, town halls and that kind of thing. Nice guy, very nice guy. But the brains behind that outfit was Maria, uh, Maria Shriver. She uh, just incredibly intelligent. Um, but I tell you why it was such a pleasure uh, hanging out with Governor Abbott. It's because he listens. You know, most politicians have rehearsed incessantly at home on their three by five cards. They come out. Um, all right, uh, in four, three, two, one. They start talking. Never stop. Thanks so much for being here. We'll see you later. But he listens. Uh, to the voters. And I'll tell you, in the congressional races, in in the district races, um, the people that he supported, that he called, uh, for almost to a man and woman, uh, won. Now, why is that? That's more than luck. It's because he's listened to the voters and what they want. Then he listened to the candidates and what they said they're going to do. He put the two together, and that's how you come up with a winning team. So... Uh, I, I I guess when you, you get right down to it, not all, not all governors are created equal, as Newsmax writes. You know, some governors consistently enjoy a lot of uh, popularity in their states. They build, uh, you know, these profiles nationally that, uh, in the end, advance their careers. Others are up and down all over the place uh, on opinion polls, so they tend to stick close to home, right, because they're safe there. Still others become plagued by all kind of scandal and criticism and make it hard to move any kind of agenda, even if it makes sense. Unlike senators who, whose popularity is usually tied to national partisan politics, most governors try to build more centrist images as bipartisan problem solvers. And again, it sounds like I'm beating Governor Greg Abbott's drum. Maybe I am. Uh, I've just seen a lot in 25 years in the media. Um, I have seen this guy with the hurricanes and, and the, the shootings in the church. He has a way of galvanizing, of galvanizing, um, on a bipartisan basis. When, in, when we need to come together as a state, as a people, he has a way of doing that. But he also, at the same time, I mean, the, the Hispanic outreach programs he's got, but at the same time, still tough on border security. He doesn't sell one out to pander to another. He doesn't work that way. Well, Newsmax selected 10 current chief executives who are doing the best job of running their states by keeping their economies good, good, sound economies, low taxes, less regulation, which in many cases is just as important, uh, while providing quality services and keeping crime down. Uh, Newsmax also looked at poll approval numbers as one indication, only one, that a governor is creating um, a majority. Okay, well, there were 10 from across the United States. Who do you think number one was? Number one, Greg Abbott, a Republican from Texas. Uh, According to recent polling done by the University of Texas, and I think it was the Texas Tribune, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Governor Abbott um, is immensely popular statewide. He scored the highest favorability rating among uh, Texas um, politicos, the widest margin between voters who approve and disapprove. Uh, You know, he's obviously the incumbent. He's campaigning for the reelection. And along with an endorsement from Trump, 
uh, Abbott received a positive job approval rating from, listen to this, 81% of Texas Republicans surveyed. Now, you know, I'm pretty hard on Republicans. I'm an independent. I was a lifelong Republican until they walked away from their conservative base. But you can't get that many or that percentage of Republicans to decide what kind of sandwiches they want at the meeting on Thursday. Um, so that, that to me was incredible. 81% of Texas Republicans surveyed. He also helped transform the state's economy. Now, believe it or not, and I think that's why we're seeing so many people from California. And luck, if you want to move here, I get it. I understand. Uh, just leave the California culture behind. Um, we're now a hub for high-tech jobs. Under Governor Abbott's leadership, tech giants like Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Oracle, Microsoft, they've all expanded uh, here in Texas, or planning to, a move that has led the state to be, listen to this, number one in the nation in tech exports. How about that? That's something to be proud of the number one state in the nation in tech exports and all exports um, reported last summer. Um, it, and that's under uh, Governor Greg Abbott. Yeah, put him back. Sort of like somebody called me the other day and said, uh, oh, when you talk to Governor Abbott, yeah, what's your message? Just tell him to keep doing what he's doing. Amen to that, brother. I, I don't disagree. Um, let me give you the rest of the governors. Uh, Larry Hogan out of Maryland. He's a Republican. Charlie Baker out of Massachusetts. He's a Republican. Um, John Hickenlooper, a Democrat uh, from Colorado. Um, uh, but I mean, you know why that is, I mean, uh, I've got some, uh, some history with, uh, Hickenlooper and, you know, he's, he's wildly, wildly populator, uh, popular in those, uh, in those areas. Um, I mean, that's, uh, they love him, but then again, it is, uh, it is Republican Glenn. Yeah. It, it's Colorado. Uh, John Bell Edwards, another Democrat from Louisiana. Um, Brian Sandoval, Republican in Nevada, Bill Haslam, Republican, Tennessee, Matt Bevan, Republican out of Kentucky, Roy Cooper, Democrat from North Carolina. And uh, Dennis Dugard, uh, Republican from South Dakota. So that rounds out the top 10. We should be very proud. Our governor is number one on the list and for all the right reasons. All right, let's step aside very quickly. Let's check that afternoon drive. We'll come right back, open up the lines, take your calls, 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. I'm Rick Roberts. This is News Talk 820 WBAP. All right, 17 minutes after the hour. Glad you're along. Thanks so much for being a part of the show. We appreciate it. Um, what? Farrakhan said what? White folks are going down along with those satanic Jews. Are you kidding me? Where, where is he speaking? He's in Chicago. That was uh, the end of last month, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Farrakhan, Farrakhan, somebody roll on that, will you, so I can vet that story? Farrakhan, white folks are going down, slamming the satanic Jews. <laughs> Man, like I said, like I started the show. <laughs> like I started the show. Um, we've lost our collective minds. All right. We decided to open up the lines. Uh, just so many things to get to. Um, Republican Jewish coalition calls on seven house Democrats to resign over their ties with Farrakhan. I don't even know the story and I'd agree with that. Okay. I got to quit. Let me get to your calls. 1-800-288-WBAP. 1-800-288-9227. Remind me to tell you about when I interviewed Farrakhan. All right, let's go to uh, where we're going. Ron in Bonham, Texas. Ron, thank you for waiting. How you doing? Uh, good afternoon, Rick. Uh, thank you for taking my call. I always enjoy uh, listening to your show. Um, the There's an opioid epidemic um, in our country. I just read an article yesterday that said 30% increase in one year. It's a 
pretty scary. Why aren't uh, these same groups that are going after the NRA uh, not going after uh, pharmaceutical companies? It's, it's just a comment that I wanted to make. And, um, and, and kind of funny, but really not. I would be willing to propose a law that all law enforcement agencies uh, that have to act on on uh, leads that were handed to them with a silver platter, maybe if they had done their job, uh, this event in Florida uh, wouldn't wouldn't have taken place. But the question that I called in for, I believe I heard you say one time um, that Hillary Clinton or the Clinton Foundation uh, received one hundred and forty five million dollars in exchange for 20 percent of our uranium. And if that is correct, uh, I'm just wondering, is that not illegal in and of itself? Well, okay. Uh, Hillary Clinton and 20% of the U.S. uranium, uh, is it true or false? Well, it depends on who you talk to. Is it illegal? Um, The way that it was uh, sent through Canada and then to another holding company, probably not. The House Intelligence and Oversight Committee, they did a joint investigation of the Obama administration's, it was 2010, I believe, their approval of a business deal that gave Russia's Atomic Energy Agency control of a company, okay, remember that, uh, with uranium mining interest in the United States. Well, it was reported that at the time it was approved, the FBI was investigating Russia's corrupt business practices uh, where nukes were concerned. Not just uranium, but a lot of things. Uh, They also uh, found that it was uh, unclear whether members of a committee that signed off on the deal, including Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, were made aware of the inquiry, which presumably presumably would have factored into their decision. And this is where it gets, you know, clear as muddy water. So the House Intelligence Committee chair, uh, that was Nunez, Uh, Republican out of California, said Congress was trying to determine whether there was an FBI investigation, was there a Justice Department investigation, Uh, if any of that was true, why was Congress not informed of what was going on? So then step in another Republican, uh, Representative uh, DeSantis, I believe, he was a member of the Oversight uh, Committee, he said his panel was going to be focusing on how the interagency process worked. Now, that's where Hillary, um, her connection gets a little fuzzy because it was an interagency process. Um, A lot of people looked at it and said, well, uh, we don't think it worked very well. Um, To hear people talk about it, the media was ignoring uh, what is probably, if it's true, the biggest scandal or at least one of the biggest in American history. Um, so, you know, it's very easy with, with Hillary's history and bills for that matter, uh, to jump way ahead of the facts. So Breitbart was one of, uh, one of the individuals, uh, that, uh, um, decided to look into this because they were accused of running misleading headlines like FBI uncovers confirmation of Hillary Clinton's corrupt uranium deal. Well, there's nobody that, I'm aware of that's got those facts. Uh, Brent Bozell, founder of the Conservative Media Research Center, claims that there's another cover-up in the making, and Trump agreed with him, and that's why he was making those claims. Um, but at the end of the day, it's still being looked at, but nobody knows. No, I mean, if they do know, they're not saying. You know, federal agents used a confidential... The problem was there were so many anonymous sources... Well, you can't do anything with that. You know, conservatives don't use anonymous sources, or they shouldn't. Federal agents used a confidential U.S. witness working inside the Russian uh, nuke industry to gather extensive financial records, make secret recordings, and intercept emails. As far back as 2009, it showed that Moscow had compromised an American uranium trucking firm with bribes and kickbacks in violation of, well, about a half dozen federal laws. Um, So the FBI was involved and still are to some degree. Uh, So did committee members, especially Clinton, know that the FBI had had found this? Nobody knows, 
or like I said, if they do know, they're not saying. Um, so once again, the Teflon mom skates out of this, uh, no worse for the wear. I mean, she may be sitting at home with a glass of Pinot Noir going, whew, boy, dodged a bullet on that one, figuratively speaking. I, I don't know. What about the donations from Russia to the Clinton Foundation? Well, I mean, even the New York Times reported, what, uh, three years ago, that uh, the Russians gradually assumed control of Uranium One in three separate transactions from 2009 to 2013. Well, the timeline's right. Canadian records show, because they had to go through Canada to make a a legal process, uh, Canadian records show a flow of cash made its way to the Clinton Foundation. For what? I mean, it's virtually impossible to view these donations as anything other than an attempt to, you know, try to curry favor with the Clintons. Donations alone do not, however, prove that Clinton was actually influenced by money to vote in favor of Uranium One or the sale of Uranium One or to overlook the FBI investigation. You know, it it boils down to, you know, a lot of us were born at night, but not last night. You know, but this is always the way it is with the Clintons. I mean, I call her the Teflon mom because nothing sticks to her. You know, it decimates everybody around her, but it doesn't touch her. It's impossible to view foreign dignitaries' habit of hanging out at Trump's Washington Hotel as anything other than an attempt to curry favor with the president, right? Reservations, room service... That doesn't, however, prove that Trump's foreign policy is influenced by money. So you see where we are in that. I mean, if it works for one or doesn't work for one, then it works or doesn't work for the other. Um, Some people are willing to give Trump the benefit of the doubt, but they don't want to give the same benefit of the doubt to Clinton, probably, again, because of her history in politics. Uh, Good call. I appreciate I didn't mean to go off on a rant, but I mean, there is no easy yes or no answer to that. And to say, oh, yeah, she did it. I mean, that's what Democrats do. That's what Pelosi and Schumer do. Well, we knew when we came in here he was a communist. You don't have anything to base that on. Well, the Clinton Uranium One deal, um, there's a lot of stories out there, but you better fact check them. All right, 426 the time. We'll uh, check with uh, Eric Bushman in the WBA newsroom and back with your calls. We'll uh, take your calls on just about anything for the duration of the show. I'm Rick Roberts, News Talk 820 WBAP. All right, 434 the time. Good afternoon, Rick Roberts with you, the Court of Public Opinion. And um, I want to get to your calls. I want anybody that's on hold, I will uh, I will get you in um, in the Court of Public Opinion. Uh, opening up the lines, uh, the last uh, part of the show, taking your calls on just about anything. Uh, let's uh, Somebody just called, just irate. Uh, look, everybody knows that Hillary Clinton sold the Russians uh, uranium. Okay, well, if everybody knows that, she'd be, probably be in prison. All right? And trust me, I immerse myself in this um, from 6 o'clock in the morning till usually 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock or even later in the day. If there was definitive proof that could connect the dots, I would know about it. There is not. If you're just calling me naive, that's okay. That's your opinion. Uh, I'm just, I don't want anyone to be laboring under a sad misconception. Just because you read something on the internet does not necessarily mean it's etched in stone. Uh, Let's go to Pat in Robinson. Pat, uh, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Pat? Doing well, Rick. Uh, Enjoy the show. Y'all do a good job up there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with the uh, elections and stuff that uh, just concluded yesterday, we uh, reelected Governor Abbott and we reelected uh, Governor Lieutenant Governor Dan uh, Patrick, aka Donnie Globe from uh, Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, you've heard of the group in Power, Texas, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. You, and you've heard of the Wilkes brothers uh, that are in Cisco, Texas, that are pouring a ton of money into this group. Well, I, I, no, I haven't heard about that. Okay, well, this they've also uh, had a lot of money in the Tarrant County elections over there. Uh, this group is a, I'm, from what I understand, it's an ultra-right group. And in my opinion, these guys are as dangerous as the Democrats. I know uh, are, you, are you talking about 
Empower Texans. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, that's a that's a nonprofit that focuses on, uh, uh, well, primarily free market principles in Texas. It's affiliated with Texans for Fiscal Responsibility uh, right. and, and the foundation, and they're out of Austin. That's out of Austin. I, what about, I, th- I thought the Wilkes brothers were, were pouring a lot of money into that. Uh, I, you know, I can't help you on that. I don't know. I can check it out and see. Yeah, I, I, w- I would. I, mean, I, I think it's something that, that, you know, you. I mean, you, you reach a lot of people. And, and I mean, I, I, re- I respect your opinion because you don't, like, do a lot of other stuff that the other talk show hosts do. I mean, you are o- at least try to be open-minded. Well, I, you know, everybody is entitled to their opinion, whether yeah. I agree with it or not. And right. sometimes those opinions are based uh, totally in fact, partially in fact, or not at all in fact. But you don't know if you just reject everything, right? Oh, I, oh, I agree. Um, and to your your previous caller, when you said House Intelligence Committee, uh, you know, you do understand that's an oxymoron. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I but, you know uh, the the Wilkes brothers the uh, the only thing that I know about them um are there is the fact that they're an LLC, a limited liability corporation. Um right. it's a family-based partnership uh, and you're right, I think they are out of Cisco and I only remember that because of the movie. Um they invest in all kinds of things, I think, don't they? Yeah, but I mean I I know that they they've uh, contributed a lot to different political Acting committee, different pack. Yeah, and I, I know. I mean, I know that they've contributed some of the ones in Fort Worth, and I, I know they've they've contributed to uh, Abbott. I think they've given some money to uh, Cruz, and I'm not sure 100 percent about Patrick. But the thing about Patrick is, Patrick's out to kill schools in this state. I'm a 37 year retired coach, and we got killed last night. 75 to 25 and it wasn't even close and this guy is going to get vouchers passed and i know people are they're all pro-choice and this and that and the other but you really got to look and see where the money is actually going uh, I, I, I got you know i got to be honest I, i'm not going to be a hypocrite i try not to do that i am absolutely against public education i'm a i'm a uh, you know if my kids were of school age today pat I, I yeah. would take another job if I had to to get them out of public education. I don't want anything with the government uh, socializing my kids. Now, having said that, um, you know, I'm, my son's also or was a jock. As a matter of fact, he's he's going to be looked at by a scout here uh, pretty quickly. I won't tell you the team until after it's over. But uh, cool. he's six four, left handed, throws in the mid nineties, and. Um, you know, it, that's pretty difficult to do if you're homeschooling, but there are ways. But, you know, I'm a big school choice guy. Uh, and I understand that. And I and I, and I I will say this. There are a lot of schools in the state that are not doing a very good job. And a big part of that is the state government. And I, I'm going to tell you, I'm, I am so conservative, it's not funny. But <laughs> trust me on that. But. It's a goal of the state to have the schools fail so they can get school toys. And then behind that, it, it, you know, in my opinion, it is about money. They're trying to get those kids off of the state dole so that they can have more money. Do you think property taxes are going to be lessened if we, you know, ship, you know, ever say two, three hundred thousand kids off to private school? Well, no, I, you know, honestly, I, I think they should be, and I think uh, those of retirement age uh, should be given a break. As a matter of fact, Governor Abbott even addressed that last night at our event. Um, is my, do we have that? Hold on a second, uh, Pat. Yeah, play that, please. Yeah, do you have that? Uh, can you lift? I know it's kind of difficult with the short time we have, but can you lift off where he talked about property tax? Yeah, give me a few minutes. Okay. Uh, Pat, I'll play that for you just as quick as I can. Uh, uh, good call, Pat. I appreciate it very much. I'll look forward to the next one. Let's go to Joe in Fort Worth. Joe, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Joe? I'm doing fine. You doing all right? I'm doing good. It's a great day. Yeah, it is. It's pretty nice. <laughs> What's going on, Joe? Well, uh, a couple of days ago, you were talking about like Walmart and uh, Dick's Sporting Goods, stuff like that, uh, setting up a mandate kind of, of uh, not selling, you know, 
farms right. to uh, people under 21. I'm thinking if they came out and said, okay, we're not going to sell to anybody that's black or we're not going to sell it to, uh, fem- you know, women. Uh, I mean, basically it's discrimination any way you go about it. Uh, well, age is not a protected category like uh, race, color, creed, religion. Uh, it's it's not protected in that, that same category. Okay, well, I, I didn't realize that. I thought age discrimination was a... Well, there there, there are some age discrimination, uh, uh, you know, complaints and lawsuits, but usually having to do with uh, people that are fired from their jobs because, uh, you know, somebody perceives them to be too old or this or that. But, uh, unfor- you know, I went through this last night, or not last night, but yesterday, um, about, uh, you know, the whole age thing in Oregon, and somebody brought it to my attention, has already filed a discrimination lawsuit uh, by, I think he's 19, um, to a company that says, you know, we're not selling to anyone younger than 21. Um, you know, I went through that, that whole process, you know, when that whole thing came about, um, you know, you could join the revolution at 16, but you had to bring your own gun. Yeah. I was just, uh, you know, I didn't know if they could get like the, uh, ACLU or something to file some kind of a suit or something i don't know oh, they will they will just as sure as i'm talking to you joe the aclu will find their way into this uh this uh verbal period jousting i mean it's it's bound to happen um you know the second amendment is under fire uh by one group and trying to be supported by another so obviously, uh, you know that's uh, that's <laughs> that's fertile ground for attorneys. Of course, they are um, very intuitive, Joe. You're right. Four forty three, the time. Let's check your afternoon drive. All right, uh, four forty eight, the time. I'm glad you're along. Uh, great day shaping up to be. Um, and uh, we were taking your calls and are taking your calls on just about everything. I got a call just a moment ago from, um, and we differ, uh, but I mean, you know, luck, if we're all exactly the same, a lot of us aren't necessary, right? A uh, guy called up, uh, big on public schools, I'm not, uh, and he was concerned about property taxes. Uh, well, I was with Governor Abbott last night at uh, a Facebook Live event, uh, as the numbers were coming in from the primaries. Uh, and this is what he had to, as a matter of fact, it was the second key issue he brought up. Health care they desperately need. Two is to reduce your property taxes. So many of our fellow Texans are being taxed out of their homes. We must rein in our skyrocketing property taxes so you can afford to live in the home of your dreams, so that seniors will not be taxed out of their homes, so that the cost of living in Texas will be far more affordable, keeping Texas an even better state. As a matter of fact, uh, if um, if you choose, and David, have you checked this out, the, uh, the Facebook Live event? Is that on the governor's website? Yes, sir, that's on his site. Okay, what is that? Uh, I, I'm for, I should know. It's at Texan, uh, excuse me, I don't want to lie. Let me look it up real quick. Right. I, I let's, forgot. Let's, let's make sure. Um, if you uh, didn't get a chance, about 57, 58,000 people um, logged on and took place, uh, took part in the uh, the uh, live Facebook event. It's still up and probably will be pretty close to the general. Uh, log on there. It's Facebook. It doesn't cost you anything. Log on and um you can watch what the, the governor said because on several occasions he brought up property tax and uh, he brought up schools at one point as well. Um, and it was, you know, we spent quite a bit of time with the governor and, and he covered a lot of ground. And it was funny because I even told him the first three key issues uh, we talked about came directly from you. Uh, they were your questions. All right, David, what's that website? It's on Facebook. It's Texans for Greg Abbott. Texans for Greg Abbott. That's correct. Uh, log on to Facebook, and you can see the uh, Facebook live event that we did last night. It went from about uh, eight thirty until ten, I think, something like that. Yes, uh, it was about uh, about an hour and a half. So, um, um, to that last caller and anybody else that uh, want to know wants to know where the governor stands on some of these key issues, go there. Uh, all right, and, and my thanks to everybody there last night too. They were very professional, and my thanks to David, my producer. He was. Uh, he was a great assistant. Uh, we had a lot going on there. Let's go to Chris in Dallas. Chris, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Chris? Hello, Chris. 
Did I lose him? Oh, I'm sorry. Here we go. I was going to talk about one subject, but I'm going to just move on to to another. Sure. Uh, I um, thought we had good results yesterday, and uh, part of the reason for that is Empower Texas. And I want people to, to know uh, that that organization is a very, very productive, very conservative uh, organization that um, has been uh, sort of masterminding turning Texas into truly the red state that it should be. We should have a legislature in Texas that stands up for conservative beliefs and doesn't allow us to have a university system, for example, in which being a conservative is essentially a career killer. I right. mean, if you want to commit <laughs> career suicide in uh, the university system of Texas, start t- telling everybody what a big conservative you are. Yep. And that just doesn't make sense. Yep, you're right. So, uh, and Rick, I've listened to you a lot. I don't call in very often. I really uh, uh, thought your uh, explanation of the uranium situation was outstanding. You obviously are an ex- extremely well-informed guy, and uh, I'm just a fan. So well, thank, thank you, you for taking my call. Thank you very okay. much. I appreciate that. Yeah, uh, Empowered Texas, uh, Empowered Texans is actually the name. Um, it's a nonprofit. Uh, they do all kinds of uh, media formats. They, uh, you know, their big deal is educating and inspiring people, Texans, to uh, exercise what they call effective citizenship. Um, and you can pick that up right off their right off their own website. It's a, a good organization. Uh, the greatest threat they say to our state's economic growth and competitiveness is the weight of government on the economy. Man, you can just lift that one sentence and put it just about any, anywhere, and it applies. Uh, Chris, thank you for the kind words and for the call. I appreciate that. Um, I don't know where the show went, um, but uh, again, if you would like to see uh, uh, Alex Trevino, he is uh, Governor Abbott's campaign spokesman. Jackson, he's uh, the campaign manager. Uh, yours truly, you, are, you already know who I am, and you, uh, the governor, comes uh, without... Uh, <laughs> Uh, without a need for introduction. Uh, you can watch that Facebook Live event in its entirety. It went from about 8.30 until 10. Um, go again to the website. Texans for Greg Abbott. Texans for Greg Abbott uh, on Facebook. And you'll get the whole thing right there. All right. God's blessings on each and every one of you, whether you agree with me or not. That's always my priority. Um, if you see a police officer, tell him thanks. Um, we need to do more of that in this country. And we're going to have an update for you with uh, David Prince from Eagle Gun Range on helping that Richardson police officer that fell in the line of duty, helping his family out. We'll have that for you tomorrow as well. That's going to do it for me. All right. Have a great, great night. I'll see you tomorrow at 2. Your afternoon drive on News Talk 820 WBAP. A full throttle, wide open. You get tired and you don't show it. Take a little deeper when you think you can't dig. No more. That's the only way I know. That's the only way I know. That's the only way I know.